Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to create this fun little stylized animation inspired by renewable energy sources and I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do, please don't forget to leave the like and if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender, don't forget to check out our courses, link is in the description. Now let's jump right into empty Blender file and first of all, let's delete the cube and the light, we can leave the camera in place. So let's select them, press X and delete. And now let's press Shift A and we'll add a circle. And now let's modify the number of vertices to something like 24. And we can tap into the edit mode, press S to make this smaller. Now let's press E, then Z and extrude it up like this. Now press S to make this smaller. And as you might see, this is already, you know, cartoonish and stylized. When creating a propellers like this, you might feel the urge, you know, to go higher and create more realistic proportions. But this time I want to make this, you know, small, chunky and stylized, um, something cute that can be used on website animation and stuff like that. So we are really going to exaggerate um, these proportions right here. So let's hold Shift S now and let's snap cursor to select it. And now tab out and let's press Shift A and we'll create another circle. And we can leave it at 24 vertices. So let's tab into the edit mode, press R for rotation, X and 90 degrees. And let's confirm. And now I'll press S to scale this down and press G then Z to move it up a little bit. We can have a little of an overlap there. And now press G then Y and move it towards the front a little bit. Press F to fill and E to extrude, all like this. And as you can see, I'm creating this, you know, turbine generator quite large, again, very stylized. So let's press Ctrl R now to create a loop cut here in the middle. And you can adjust the number of cuts with the mouse wheel, but right now I'm interested only in this one. So confirm with left click and right click to release in place. And now we can go for face select here. Rotate this a little bit, select the face in the back, press S and make it smaller like that. Now go back to the edge select by pressing 2, alt click the edge loop right here that will select it all around and press Ctrl B to bevel and this way we are able to create these rounded shapes and now you can increase the number of segments with the mouse wheel similar to the loop cut tool. So let's create something like this and now let's hold alt and click here to select the loop in the front. And let's press Ctrl B again to create additional bevel, but right now I will use the mouse wheel to reduce to one segment like this. Now let's go to the face select again, select the front face and I'll hold Shift S and Snap cursor to select it so I can move, you know, my origin of the new object. And let's tab out now and I'll press Shift A and add a circle again. And now let's tab into the edit mode, press R, then X and again 90 degrees and let's confirm with Enter press S to make it smaller and we'll make the room for the propellers. So press G then Y and move it towards the front and now press F to fill E to extrude. Now again, I'll press Ctrl R to create a loop cut here, right click to release and select the front one by alt clicking there, press S to scale it down and now alt click here and Ctrl B again to create some curvature. So this is the general shape I'm going for. And now for the propellers, let's tab out. Let's press Shift A and we'll add a plane. Now tap into the edit mode, press R, X and 90 again to rotate 90 degrees. And we can press one on an ampad for the front view and additionally enable X-ray view right here so we can see through and press S and make it smaller like this. Now go for vertex select or you can press one on a keyboard or just click here and select these two vertices right there, press G then Z and move them up like this. And now we can press E then Z to extrude one segment. Let's zoom out a little bit and now press E then Z again to extrude this all the way. Make sure not to go too far uh, because the propeller needs to spin without hitting the ground. So something like this should be fine. We'll see about it a little bit later. And now we can select this vertex right here, press G and move it to the side a little bit or you can lock it on the X axis. And now let's press Ctrl R and create a few cuts here. I'm increasing number of them with the mouse wheel again. So something like this should be enough. Right click to release in place. And now select the top vertices and we'll enable proportional editing here. 
with the smooth fall off and now we can press R then Z and play with the fall off with the mouse wheel. So now if we rotate um, the rest of the vertices will follow. So let's create something like this for example and let's now tap out and let's finish the model. So first of all I want this blade to be a little bit chunky so let's add a solidify modifier right here and increase the thickness. And now we can just press Ctrl 2 or, you know, add subdivision surface modifier from here. And you will see when you collapse the solidify modifier, there's another one, subdivision surface. And we have this nice smooth shape of the blade. Now we can tap into the edit mode, press Ctrl R and create the loop cut right here. So we can control the shape a little bit better. But overall, I'm satisfied with this. So let's tap out and let's create the rest of the blades. So let's look from the front by pressing 1 on an numpad. And now I will press Alt D to duplicate this, but don't release it just yet. Press R immediately and let's enter 120 degrees and let's confirm. And now if you press Shift R, you will just duplicate it like this. And now let's hold Shift, select all of them with the top as last and press Ctrl J. So now we join them into one object and we can control them as one. And let's just make this a little bit nicer. So for example, we can test out the length of the blades and I think this is too small, so we can press S to scale it up a little bit. And I think this will do. So let's turn off the X-ray view now and let's make this a little bit nicer. So let's select this object right here and let's add the bevel modifier right here and let's increase the segments to two and let's reduce the amount. You can see the bevels right here on these sharper corners, which is exactly what I want because now if we press Ctrl-1 for a subdivision surface, we have this nice shape, right click and shade smooth. And let's do the same thing here. So let's add a bevel increase to two segments and let's reduce this one here and control one, right click and shade smooth. Okay, and now for the blades, I can clearly see they're a little bit too behind. So press G, then Y and move them towards the front, right click and shade smooth since they already have subdivision surface. And right here, we can just select this part, right click and shade smooth. And you will see some shading issues probably and that's because this is long faces all the way from top to bottom so what you can do is tab in press ctrl r and create some cuts right here they will add more geometry and make the shading much better so right now only thing we need to do is to animate this a little bit so let's expand the timeline tiny bit and let's set the end of the animation to 120 frames let's go to the output settings and let's set this to 30 fps and now on the frame one, we'll start animating, but first we'll need to parent some objects. So first of all, let's select the blades. Now hold shift and select this object as last. Press Ctrl P and parent. And now I will select this one, hold shift, select this part, press Ctrl P and parent. So now if you rotate this, it will rotate as a whole. And now if you rotate this one, it will rotate the blades as well. So that's exactly what we want to do right here. So first of all, let's select this part and on the frame one, We'll press N for the side panel and insert the rotation on the Z axis. Let's insert single keyframe. And now I will duplicate this keyframe here. So while in the timeline, press Shift D and duplicate it all the way towards the back. And now press Shift D again and duplicate it to frame 60. And now on the frame 30, let's move there. I want to move this 30 degrees to the left. So let's press R, then Z and 30. Let's confirm and right click and insert single keyframe. And now on the frame 90, we can go other way. So R then Z and minus 30 and let's confirm and right click and insert single keyframe. And now if you play this, you will see everything is working fine, but the animation stops towards the end and start moving again from the frame one. But we wanna have continuous movement um, that's looping. So let's expand this even more. And while in the timeline, hit control tab to switch to the graph editor now press A to select all keyframes and period on a numpad to focus to zoom in on our animation. And now we can click anywhere, select the first keyframe. And here you can see the culprit. The animation is accelerating here and then decelerating right there at the end. So what we can do is to try to create a straight line that goes through the frame one. And we can just move this handle right here and create this angle so the handle goes along the graph. And now let's do the same thing right here. And now if you play this, you will see 
that the propeller continues to the frame one fluently. So that's the first thing and now just the rotation. So let's go to the frame one. Let's select this front part right here that moves the blades as well. And let's right click the Y rotation and insert single keyframe. Now let's just move to the frame 120. And now we need to figure out the direction of the movement. So let's press R then Y and start moving and you will see we are going to the positive numbers right here. And I don't want to go this way because I want these flat sides of the blades to be going, you know, through the wind or rather through the air. So that's why we need to go to the plus 360 degrees. So let's enter it right here. Right click and insert single keyframe. And the next thing we can do, let's press A and focus on our animation again. Um, this way, again, this would accelerate and decelerate. But rather than adjusting these handles right here, it's much more simple. We can just press T and choose linear interpolation and we'll get this straight line. And basically we get one fluent movement that loops perfectly. So that's about the propeller and the animation. And right now I will go ahead and finish the scene and fast forward through the process. Um, so you can see how I finished the scene, you know, how I made some materials and some lighting. And if you're interested in this process more, be sure to check out more of my commentary tutorials. You will find the link down in the description. And if you want to accelerate your learning process and learn in the most effective way, be sure to check out those courses I mentioned in the beginning. I carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills through low poly illustration all the way to full character illustration. And with the new one, you get to create a fully textured environment. So if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. So that's it for today's animation and I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did please again leave the like and if you're new around here please subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.